Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about the RT events. Already we have covered three part of RT events and I have mentioned all those three parts in the description. This is the fourth part and every part we are covering four RT events and in this part also we are going to cover the four RT events. Now first we can start with what is RT event? Events control how runnable entities are triggered by the generated RT at runtime and events can be configured or defined inside the soft component internal behavior of an atomic software component type and they are used to activate runnable entities or to unblock a wait point inside a runnable entity and events can be configured in such a way and we can have multiple events that means RTE events can be listed in any order and events should be configured inside the software component internal behavior. If you will see this slide, the marked one we are going to discuss today. For an example, internal triggered occurred event, init event, transformer hard error event and OS task execution event. In this slide, you will come to know that what all are the events are possible according to AutoSAP and how about the workflow also. And you can watch our previous three parts and you will come to know about all these RT events. In this slide, you will come to know about it, whether the particular RT event need to can be able to configure with wait point or not and whether the task mapping is needed or not. For an example, whenever wherever it is mentioned as a WP, these RT events can be used to unblock wait points. The corresponding wait point contains a reference to the RT event. One RT event can be used to trigger several wait points in different runnable entities. Wherever the task mapping is needed, the corresponding event is, it should be mapped to the task. Meaning, you can say, you can consider the way, corresponding runnable entity is mapped to the task of the RT event. And wherever it is mentioned as a direct call, the corresponding runnable entity may be directly invoked by the initiating runnable entity and it is running in the same task of the caller. So, this slide clearly talks about what are the RT events, whether it can have a wait point or not, whether the task mapping is needed or not. We will get a clear info from this slide. Now we can start to discuss about one by one. Now first we can start with internal triggered occurred event. According to the name of internal triggered occurred event, this will activate a runnable within the software component possibly by direct function call without passing data. And internal triggered occurred event is used within the software component instance to activate one or more runnables whenever the event occurs. And the very important point when you are going to configure the internal triggered occurred event, you should configure the internal triggering point as well. Since the event is internal to your component, we no need to worry about ports. So, no ports are required and hence no connections are necessary. And whenever you are configuring an internal triggered occurred event, an internal triggering point, RTE will generate an API called RT underscore IR trigger. Now, I will show you how we can do the internal triggered occurred event configuration and how it will be associated with the internal triggering point. If you will see this slide, here I have taken an application software component called software component internal trigger and we have an internal software component internal behavior. Here I have configured the internal triggered occurred event and this internal triggered occurred event associated with one runnable entity and it equal to the internal triggering point because as we discussed internal triggering point is more important when we are thinking about the internal triggered occurred event. For more clarity, I have taken additionally timing event as well. And this timing event will be called every 50 millisecond and two runnable entity I have configured. One runnable entity RT internal trigger in is associated with the internal trigger occurred event. Another runnable entity is associated with the timing event. If you will see here, this is the internal triggering point. Here I have mentioned a software implementation policy as queued. So, you have to always think about it whether you need a queued mechanism. If you don't want it, you can configure as a standard. But you have to ensure your RT has to support both the software implementation policy mechanism. So, here I have selected as a queue. This is a C code out of our configuration. Every AutoSAR developer used to write it. For an example, here I have a two function call. That means two function definition. One is internal trigger in, another one is internal trigger out. Inside the internal trigger out, we have a RT underscore IR trigger call and we are not passing any data. So, this is the main use case of internal trigger occurred event. Init event. As you all know that init event will be used to, uh, supposed to be used for initialization purposes, for starting and restarting a partition. But it is not guaranteed that whenever you are configuring an init event, there is no guarantee that runnable entities referenced by this init event are executed before the regular runnable entities 
are executed for the first time. As an autosar engineer, you have to be very careful when you are selecting the unit event and you have to do the execution order as well. So, whenever you are going to do the task mapping, the RT position in task should be mapped properly. You can take an example of unit event will be configured in a way and it will be mapped with the task in a way as to trigger after timing event. Then you will not get the expected result. So, the unit event which is used to activate runnable entities for initialization purposes. Then in that case, this will get triggered in the init task. So then RT should activate this particular init events whenever the RT underscore start is executed. Now I, I can show the configuration as well. For an example, here I have configured the init event. I have taken the software component application. I have internal behavior. Init event is configured. It is associated with the runnable entity. This runnable entity, we have a init call. And this event should be mapped with the init task. Then whenever you are mapping like that, then automatically RT will generate the code in such a way. Then in that case, whenever the RT start has happened, then automatically whenever your OS init task is getting triggered, automatically this particular runnable will also will get triggered. So this is the way you have to be properly configure it. Otherwise, you will not get the expected result in the case of init. Transformer hot error event might be you, uh, most of the autosar engineers doesn't care about the transformer hot error event because most of the applications everything deals with whatever the events we have discussed till now but still I am interested to cover the transformer hot error event as well. So the particular event is raised when data are received which should trigger a client server operation or an external trigger but during transformation of the data a hot transformer error occurred. So you can imagine a case, there are two kinds of errors. One is soft error, another one is hard error. And hard errors always notified via transformer hard error events. And soft errors correspond to your warnings and hard errors stop the execution of the transformer chain. But if a transformer which transforms the request of a client server communication on the server side returns a hard error, then the RT shall trigger the assigned transformer hard error events. And main important thing here is, the transformers have a fixed set of errors depending on their transformer class. There are multiple transformer class and I have planned to take a more detail about the transformer details in a separate video. But here you can keep in your mind that particular event is raised whenever data is received which should trigger a client server operation or an external trigger but during a transformation of the data a hot transformer error occurred. If you will see this picture, here we have a sending application software component and it has a multiple transformer 1 and transformer 1. And this can be combined when you are when the RT generated the code. If you will see this picture, then you will clearly can understand it. And we have a multiple transformers and this is associated with iSignal 2 and this particular application software component has iSignal 1. And this is a receiving application software component. And the possible written error code value is 00, 0 means success. 0, 01 to 7 up is planned and reserved for soft errors and 80 to FF is for hard errors. OS task execution event. Whenever your particular OS task is executed and you want to trigger the runnable, then you have to select the OS task execution event. And this particular RT event is supposed to execute runnable entity, which you have to react on the execution of specific OS task. And the main use case of OS task execution event is a scheduling of runnables of complex drivers which have to react on. OS task execution. So keep in your mind whenever you want to react, whenever the particular OS task is executed, then you have to choose OS task execution event. Here I can show one example. For an example, runnable A, runnable B, runnable C, runnable D, runnable E. Runnable A triggered by the software component mode switch event and the position in task I have selected as 12. But runnable B has a RT, that means OS task execution event. And runnable E also has a OS task execution event, but this position is 17, this is 32, and you have a mode switch event res respective of 22 and 27. So whenever your OS task is executed, for an example, the RT shall activate a runnable entities triggered by an OS task execution event. So when the OS task, which the OS task execution event is mapped, is running and reaches the position of this runnable entity. So for such a use case, you can select the OS task execution event. So you have clearly, clearly got the idea about how the RT events works. And you can watch other RT events video also to have a more clear idea about how RT events behaves and how you can do the configuration. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you so much. If you like it, please share it with your friends. If you want to stay with us for more technical content, then please subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.